Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to one more a webinar organized by NIDE Global Appliance. Uh, thank you all for join, uh, joining us today. Uh, I hope everyone is staying safe, staying well, uh, working at home or working uh, outside. Um, we are here today for, for training in, on condensing units. And, and our application engineer, our Embraco application engineer, Johari Gregorio, uh, is going to present today's webinar. Uh, can you hear us, Johari? Are you there? <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon, Johari. Welcome. Thanks for your time. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. Today's, you know, here in Georgia is amazing day. The sun is shining. Yes. Where is amazing? It is, it is. Uh, so today we're going to have a very important presentation, not only for technicians or, or engineers, but also everyone who owns their refrigeration equipment. And uh, so uh, in our agenda, Johari will present. In a brief overview uh, about Nidi Global Appliance and our brand Embraco, then he's going to explain uh, a little bit uh, of the benefits of choosing a uh, condensing unit over a compressor. Uh, he's going to explain a little bit about the, the unit's main components, the, the features and the functionalities of each part of the condensing unit. Uh, Johari will also talk about how to select a condensing unit and how to properly maintain uh, a unit so to, to prevent failure. Uh, his, uh, Johari will also give us an overview uh, what we should consider, uh, what, uh, what data we should gather when we're going to choose a, a unit to replace it and, and its components as well. And finally, uh, Johari will present our brand new portfolio of condensing units that we just launched, the second generation of condensing units that was designed specifically for the requirements of the North American market. And everyone who has questions, who has any doubts or would like to, to make a comment, I see that some people are already commenting on the YouTube platform and also here on Click Meeting. So if you have any Question, uh, technical questions. Johari will try to answer everything in the end. So we're going to have a Q&A session after the presentation. So please leave your questions, your comments on the chat, both on Click Meeting and YouTube who, for whoever is watching on YouTube. And Johari and I will try to answer then most of them live. And if not, we will try to answer afterwards. So this training will be available on demand on the YouTube platform and our Embraco channel. Uh, so everybody who's connected to the U via YouTube will be able to, to watch the, the webinar in the same uh, link. And uh, you, you will be able to, to see the presentation again and share with your colleagues. So let me introduce Johari Gregorio, our application engineer for Embraco. So Johari represents the commercial segment for Embraco brand here in North America. But for, for nine years, he has been working uh, with Embraco, uh, providing technical support to customers in Europe and also North America. Uh, Johari specializes in working with refrigeration equipment manufacturers, uh, working on improving system uh, efficiency. He has worked several times with transitioning, with the migration from traditional refrigerants to, to the newest ones in the hydrocarbons, and also from fixed speed uh, technology to, to variable speed technology or inverter, as some people call, call them. And he also has supported several OEMs in adopting high-level assembly products like condensing units or precharged sealed units or, or cooling decks. Uh, Johari has a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering from the, maybe I'm pronouncing it uh, wrong, but please correct <laughs> me, Johari, from the Univers Università degli Studi di Catania in Italy. That is correct. Yeah, I got it there, in Italy, yeah. 
Uh, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> that was pretty uh, thorough, actually. <laughs> I appreciate that. I try, I try. Maybe you can repeat that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do as, as good as you did. No, that's pretty good. <laughs> and uh, prior to your experience, Johari, with Nidic, you also worked with maintenance and automation in the oil and gas industry, that's right? That is correct. Yeah. All right. Um, so are you ready for, for today's presentation? Oh, definitely. I'm ready. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, um, from this moment on, I will take on uh, the 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 slides and discuss about them. So let's start from the uh, real introduction. All right. NIDEC Global Appliance. Um, uh, we are part of NIDEC. NIDEC is a uh, major corporation, um, a Japanese major corporation, and we didn't. There is a NIDEC Global Appliance. It is a focused on appliances for refrigeration, um, for commercial, household, and HVAC. We have a two headquarters, one in Brazil and one in Italy, 14 manufacturing plants. Uh, we're going to see later how they're spread out in the world. Uh, three, uh, nine uh, R&D centers in the world with more than 600 engineers, 50,000 plus employees, and 70 million uh, compressors and motors uh, production capabilities. So 70 millions, uh, which most of them, like more than a half is compressor, 40, about, about 40 is compressor and 30 is uh, motors. And we serve about 80 countries all around the world. So basically all the major countries in the world, uh, we're, we're able to serve and we have networks today to serve them. And as I was saying before, here's a little bit the map of our global footprint. We're kind of proud of our global footprint because, um, you know, nowadays with the, today's challenges also in logistic and how, uh, you know, the customer experience, you want to get be close to the customers. So definitely uh, that's an advantage um, on our end. We do have uh, three manufacturing plants in Brazil, uh, one a foundry, a compressor manufacturing plant and a um, condensing unit manufacturing plant. We do have a manufacturing also in Mexico for uh, motors. And uh, uh, we do have manufacturing also in Europe, in uh, Austria and Slovakia, in uh, uh, Romania. We do have also plants for in uh, China, two of them, one for uh, compressors and another two uh, for motors and for our electronics. We do in-house electronics for our compressors. Besides the manufacturing plants, there are several um, sales offices, uh, like, like two here in the US, in Duluth, in St. Louis. We do have it there in Italy as well, uh, one in Chieri, and in, uh, in Russia, we do have a, a sales office. Uh, here, this slide is about uh, what, what actually drives our developments. Uh, we are a uh, company that is very much focused on technology. We do invest a lot in technology. So whenever we do a new development, there are three main drivers uh, that uh, for our developments. The first one is energy efficiency. Efficiency. We want to have, um, and in several models and segments, we want to have the, 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 the highest, highest efficiency out of the compressors and condensed unit and systems overall to provide to our customers uh, solutions that are uh, cutting edge uh, in, uh, in that regards, and to comply with the, the latest regulations, uh, DOE and uh, E-STAR. And this is, for us, one major criteria. The second one is about natural refrigerant. We've been a f uh, one of the first adopters and sponsors of natural refrigerants in the world, developing the first compressors for uh, R600A, R290. And we also had in the past some CO2 that we don't have anymore, but we've been really uh, 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 always uh, looking at natural refrigerants uh, as a solution for the refrigeration market, mainly because they have very low GWP. So it's a future proof, they are future proof refrigerants and they provide very high efficiency uh, because of their characteristics. Um, and also as a third driver, uh, we're looking for monetization. What that means, means like um, we, there are several developments and technologies in order to pr provide the same performances in a smaller case. This provides a lot of benefits, 
not uh, numerically related to the sustainability, like a lower, a smaller footprint, but also uh, for several applications uh, nowadays, there, there are challenges in terms of size. So providing uh, high performances, high capacities out of a smaller case, uh, it's a winning solution for several customers of ours. And here, um, this slide is about um, our uh, business units and brands. So within the global appliance, there are three main business units. Uh, the home appliances that uh, serve solution for refrigeration, refrigerators, uh, washing machine and dryers, and dishwasher. Um, the, here, the main uh, uh, brand here is still Embraco and uh, uh, Nidec uh, Motors. Then we have commercial appliances that uh, includes compressor, condensing unit for refrigeration and uh, cooling system in general. And then we have a HVAC division that is motors and components uh, for uh, the HVAC where we have the brand <clears throat> U.S. Motors and uh, the premium brand Rescue. In this webinar, we're, we're going to focus on um, the commercial appliances and, uh, in general, the solutions that we provide are kind of uh, they encompass the several products from the custom type to the standard type, and uh, but we have several some features that are common to all of them. So we, as I said before. Uh, we have a lot of solutions related to natural, um, natural refrigerant and efficient solutions for where we always look for innovation. So for new uh, um, features that uh, can be uh, aligned to the new requirements of the energy standards mainly, but not only that, also the new standards and regulations, uh, for example, related to uh, refrigerants, uh, charging increases. Reliability, reliability is utmost uh, uh, important. Uh, we we have uh, our internal criteria; they always exceed the international standards uh, in order to make, be sure that we provide comp compressors, condensed units, sealed units, and solutions in, in general that last uh, for for years, decades. And um, here, it's um, this chart is about the portfolio for commercial refrigeration, uh, where we split it and. Um, type of application. So on the left side, you can see merchandisers, uh, in the middle, food service and food retail, and on the right, also medical. Uh, there are several applications, really uh, plenty of applications in the commercial market we are addressing. It's not very easy to really put them, uh, summarize them, uh, but it's a, a quite a good uh, summary. Um, we have the in this in order to serve these three segments uh, and markets, we have three main uh, say groups. One is about fixed speed compressors, so single speed uh, compressors that can go from uh, two cc to thirty eight, uh, so from two cubic centimeter uh, displacement up to thirty eight. So this covers uh, roughly up to two horsepower of compressor power on a single piston compressor. For some markets, we also have available uh, the scroll compressors, mainly for European markets. Um, then on the variable speed at the second line here, we do have plenty of options. We do have almost 40 years of experience with the variable speed uh, and 20 years in the market already with variable speed solutions. We've been pioneer in, uh, in this type of range. Variable speed, uh, it's a three-phase motor uh, driven by uh, an inverter that converts the power uh, from a 115 or from a single phase to a three-phase. That is what the motor actually needs. And this uh, brings several advantages to the final application because you can tailor the capacity to what is the actual need of your application. And here uh, we're just showing the models that can match for each application. So we have the uh, full motion FMF. Uh, from FMX, VS, and um, VE, VNE. So there is a broad range of compressors that exceed up to uh, one plus horsepower to uh, su support the, the market. And here at the bottom, uh, we are complex systems, let's say more, we can go from a condensed units up to sealed units, so pre-charged sealed units. Uh, condensed units are manufactured in two plants, 
uh, one in Brazil uh, that accounts about uh, almost half a million uh, units per year. And uh, the one in Slovakia as well. It's um, more, more than 100,000. So we do have basically two plants that support the whole market uh, for condensed unit and uh, pre-charge seal system. In this slide now, and uh, from now on, we're gonna focus on the condensed unit after we did this brief introduction. So uh, why we are uh, presenting the advantages, why to select the condensed unit versus dealing with a single component. The idea is like, we want to bear the complexity and leave you just the ease of choosing uh, uh, a cooling system for you, part of a cooling system. So reduce less complexity for you, you can have a complete pre-assemble uh, high side of your system. So this simplifies the production and the maintenance on your end. We are introducing today, and, and we're gonna talk about a standard portfolio. So something you can easily rely to and find information. So, and uh, understanding the features, optimized uh, in order for uh, heavy duty um, uh, conditions and uh, we're going to have also options for natural refrigerants. The main thing is that all related to the condensed units uh, is going to be covered by the Embraco well-known quality. That uh, So we're going to expand our quality standards that are very high already for compressors to all the, the whole condensed units. As I was mentioning before, uh, what are the reasons uh, to buy condensed units? Relate instead of dealing with the single components. The first of all is to reduce the complexity of select, selecting different components. When you deal with a, uh, a system, you have to, to consider uh, uh, sizing the right condenser, uh, finding the right fan motor, and then the compressor that delivers the capacity you need, and then looking at the, every single feature. Uh, a condenser unit makes your life easier because you have all that already set and uh, uh, pre-assembled. This also simplifies the, um, the production process because in several applications, you can simply slide in the condensed unit in your system and, uh, and have it hooked up and uh, assembled. So this makes the assembly quite easy and also the, the replacement. Um, this is, makes life easier also for uh, uh, the warehouse and the supply chain because you have to handle less uh, SKUs. So instead of buying or dealing with several items in stock, you just have a condensed unit that includes all of them and uh, you handle you handle less SKUs. Um, and as here, easy and quick installation and maintenance. Uh, this is because as you ha don't have to deal with every single component, you can uh, deal just with a condensed unit. We're gonna, gonna see later on how it is much easier to deal with a condensed unit rather than the single components. And indeed, uh, as I was mentioning before, um, here there is a, a our uh, mark of quality and high level standard uh, quality and the compressors and the components are reliable and start for in order to serve the north american region as i was mentioning before uh, let's try to make a comparison between what when what you do uh, what happens you know, in a scenario when you have to buy only uh, one the single components, the single items of a condensed unit, or when you uh, you have to select just the, the condensed unit uh, as a whole. Um, when you buy only a compressor, you have to evaluate the demand of the heat load of your system. Um, then you have to match that with the cooling capacity of the compressor. Evaluate uh, the capacity of the condenser, so finding a right condenser that can dissipate the heat out of the compressor. Um, you have to select the fan motor that that can provide you the right CFM um, and uh, define a manufacturing process to put everything together. Uh, and then have to reach out to each supplier to provide you the parts that you need and then how to, to uh, store them in stock, uh, uh, make them available in the process line to have them assembled and then build a condensed unit. So having a, a, a reliable process in quality um, in your production line in order to make sure that you have everything uh, assembled. Or in the field, you have to do the, assemble, uh, the assembly in the field uh, for, for a, a service. When you buy an Embraco condensed unit, uh, you have to 
mainly on the contrary, mainly just evaluate the heat load of the system or know what is the heat load and the, the pressures that are in the system and select a condensed unit that uh, matches uh, your system needs. So as you can see, uh, it's way uh, less complex to deal with a condensed unit, uh, not just from the uh, technical standpoint, but also in, uh, in several other aspects related to warehousing, SKUs, and uh, uh, dealing with suppliers, for example. Let's now uh, look at what are the main components and functionalities of the, uh, the condensed unit. And here uh, we have tried to summarize the, the main one. We have a base plate in which is uh, the core the, of, the, of the condensed unit is still the compressor, that is the, the, the part that creates, builds up the pressure difference. And then the hot gas that goes out of the compressor has goes inside the compressor, the, the condenser coil that has to dissipate this heat. The condenser is made of copper tubes and uh, aluminum fins. And, um, and this has the job of the condenser is to dissipate the heat and so as to convert the, the superheated gas to a subcooled uh, liquid still in high pressure. Then here we have a liquid receiver, just following the, the path of the, of, the, of the gas that has to, it's a storage for refrigerant. This helps when you have um, low ambient conditions, for example, or when you have to, uh, you deal with a, um, a expansion device that is a thick expansion valve uh, where you need to have a little storage of liquid to make sure that the, the expansion valve uh, is fed with liquid and not with uh, flashed gas. Um, going forward, uh, we have the valves, so suction and discharge valves uh, already set uh, here in a bracket. And um, this, uh, you can make the, the connections, easy connections to the valves. Uh, this will allow you to uh, easily uh, hook up to your existing system. <clears throat> and um, here we have a liquid line that uh, is made of the filter dryer um, that has the function of uh, retaining the uh, moisture inside the system and uh, and the impurities that are in the system. So this uh, has a plays a major role uh, for the performance of the system. So after the filter dryer, uh, here's a side glass um, that is a device that helps you to understand uh, how is this the status of the the gas uh, in terms of uh, uh, if it's liquid or or still gaseous. Um, you want to make sure that you have uh, liquid and uh, not gas, and also in terms of the moisture level inside the system. And uh, lastly, uh, pressure switches. Um, there are, uh, um, we have also options with pressure switch. The pressure switch can be either from a low side or high side. And uh, it's an, uh, an item that prevents to exceed or a certain uh, pressure level or to be too low uh, when it's a low side pressure switch. And um, this can prevent uh, malfunctionings or operating out of the, the envelope of the condensed unit of the system itself. And here uh, we're going to discuss now about how to select the correct uh, condensed unit for, for the application. First thing is like looking at the uh, condensing unit, the cooling capacity. What is the capacity that you need? So when you have a condensing unit set, you have to look at what is the evaporating temperature, if it's a LBP, MBP, or HBP uh, condition. So understanding for the specific system condition, what is the capacity that you need? So usually you consult a catalog, you look at the performance of the condensing unit, you look at the system first, and you, know, you gotta know what is the, the system conditions you want to operate? And then you compare with the catalog conditions with the condensed unit and understand, okay, this, uh, what is the evaporating, the evaporating temperature I have to operate and what is the capacity that, that I need? So from, uh, from that, you can select already a condensed unit in terms of uh, capacity needs. After you look at the capacity, uh, there are also other uh, aspects that are very important. So available space, space, always matters, especially when you do a, doing a replacement in the field, but also when you're designing a new cabinet. You always want to have the, the smallest space uh, possible. That's usually uh, what, what you're always looking for. 
But in general, space matters. So you want to check the, the dimensions and make sure that the, the height, the length, and the, the depth of the condensed unit are um, fit inside the doghouse of your system. Uh, then you want to look at the, uh, the, the voltage, if it's a 115 or 208, um, and also the torque. Torque is very important because there are uh, systems in which uh, you have either an expansion valve or a cap tube, and the, some condensed units are can, might be defined, you know, designed just for a cap tube, some others just for a expansion valve. Um, in our case here, what we're going to discuss even later and introduce uh, all, all the condensed units are uh, with high starting torque, so they can cope with both cap tube and expansion valve. But definitely in the field, you want to make sure that 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 you check on that because um, uh, if you end up applying, for example, a low starting torque a condensed unit a compressor or condensed unit in a you know in, in a system that has a suspension valve, you might have troubles because the condensed unit and the compressor will not start. And then you got to look at the requirement required components. Uh, meaning like liquid receiver, as we said before, uh, filter dryer and uh, side glass, all these components uh, uh, in, depending on the application can be very essential for you to correctly uh, install uh, the, the condensing unit and uh, your system to hook it up properly to, prep, to um, do a charge in your system. All these features are very important as well to take in consideration. Now we're going to look at uh, how to perform uh, preventive maintenance on a condensed unit and why that is important. Uh, that is uh, a good point. Usually, if you are an OEM, uh, you want to design your system in order to reduce as much as possible the, the maintenance service in the field. So uh, at least not when there, there is a disruptive, when there is actually a failure in the field. So preventive maintenance helps to increase the, the life of the equipment. Uh, so you can last longer and run for longer time. And also in general, uh, can also help to run more efficiently um, the, the whole system. Because as we're gonna see later, uh, having a condensed unit that is uh, well set, uh, clean, helps to definitely to run properly and reduce the energy bill. The first thing you're gonna do when you do uh, when you check the condensed unit, you're gonna see all the fastening, uh, making sure there is all the all the, the parts are correctly uh, tight. Um, there's no no leakage, no particular vibrations or uh, out of the condensed unit. So that's very important, even because uh, you might know um, nowadays uh, the controls that there are related to the refrigerant to leakages. Uh, that's that's a major issue. You don't want to incur in any of them. So the first thing is to check really on the on the um, all the components there uh, fastened together. Then uh, you want to look at the coil, uh, the condenser coil. Either if it's a finless or with fin, um, most of them are uh, fin. You want to remove all the impurities. So uh, clean it uh, thoroughly um, and making sure you can you can use a compressed air or a, a cloth that is like uh, dry and try to avoid. I mean. It's very important to not to use uh, clean, cleaning uh, products that use uh, chlorine because chlorine uh, is pretty aggressive and uh, can cause like uh, to rust uh, your system. And um, so as you can see here in this picture, there are just a few uh, um, image, images that are showing how like a, a dirty one and a good one looks like. And why this is important? This is really key for the performances. The condenser uh, is a heat exchanger. So it needs to maximize uh, the, the surface, the area surface in contact with the, with the air. If it, there are impurities, if it's clogged, basically the, the active area in contact with the ambient air is, way, is much less. So it ends up reducing the actual heat exchange between the air and um, and the and the refrigerant so this basically makes the pressures inside the system going up and when the pressure in the system go up uh, this can create issues to all the other components uh, mainly not just to the system that it won't perform properly eventually you're going to see uh, uh, some uh, outage because of the, the overload protector tripping or pressure cutout uh, tripping as well 
So this is very important to, to clean the condenser. You also want to look at the fan motor, uh, because depending on the fan motor in the position, the, there are several applications, as you, you might know, uh, in kitchen application or uh, even vending machines. But definitely, not, not, it's not necessarily uh, possible to control the, the final application where it's located. And so it might happen that uh, it's actually very dirty. And you can have also the fan motor, uh, like the blades, to get dirty as well. Or you can have uh, something that is actually uh, uh, stopping the blade to, to perform properly, to, to spin properly. So uh, reviewing and looking at the, the fan blade and the fan motor, uh, it's very important as well. Um, and then you want to check on uh, the compressor uh, resistances. Um, if you look at the compressor, it has an hermetic terminal uh, with the pre pins, and there you can check the resistances. This is important when you, uh, because usually if you're in the field and you're doing a service, is because either you're just doing maintenance or because something was wrong, if, or if you think that something was going wrong, you want to make sure that the compressor is still uh, working fine. And the resistance check is something that can definitely help you uh, on that. You basically get the resistances uh, um, with a multimeter, and uh, you compare them with the data sheet information that provide you the resistance values. If those are in the ballpark of 10% of the resistance values, you're, you're good. So it means the compressor is still good. So uh, looking now what to do, like in you know, a checklist, uh, what to look at, at when you do a replacement in the field. <clears throat> you want to look first, what is the application? Because uh, different applications, they have different characteristics. As we said before, expansion valve, cap tube, and uh, like uh, cooled, fan cooled, or static cooling, depending if they have the evaporator, uh, skin evaporator, or, or, or a regular evaporator. So you want to look at the, at the application, because that can drive you already give you already indication the second one is about the refrigerant refrigerant is, is the really it's a very important especially nowadays where there are plenty of new blends and refrigerants in general you want to make sure that you know what refrigerant is in the system and what refrigerant you have to use um, because depending on the refrigerant you're gonna you need a different condenser unit a compressor oil and a filter dryer Different components will change, definitely, uh, based on the refrigerant. The third one is about cooling capacity. At this point, you want to make sure, OK, you know what is the cooling capacity. If you're replacing uh, something in the field, uh, probably you have a already condensed unit, you're going to check the pressures, uh, spec the nominal pressures of the system, and look at the condensed unit that's it's already in the field, uh, look at what are the, the, the cooling capacity in the data sheet, you're going to check up, look for a condensed unit that has the equivalent capacity uh, at that condition. Then you have to look at the evaporating temperature, so the actual operating uh, conditions. Usually you find just um, you know, the pressure. If you're in the field, the, what, what's in the label is not the evaporating temperature, rather the pressure. Um, and the, the voltage. Yeah, the voltage is very important as well. Then, as we were saying before, you want to check what is the expansion device, either a cap tube or expansion valve, and um, the other accessories. As we mentioned before, um, you also want to make sure that you replace them uh, according to the manufacturer specifications. At this point, uh, we're going to go through the second generation of condenser units. Uh, we call the second generation because we've been providing condensed units in the market for years, uh, decades. Uh, this time, specifically for the North American market, we uh, designed a portfolio uh, that attempts to address all the market needs uh, for within our range. So we call this second generation uh, condensed unit. Uh, it's a kind of, we call it also standard portfolio, as we said before, uh, and we're gonna see now, it is made with standard components and standard features and layout that uh, helps for easy selection of the of the parts and and in the field. The one of the main focus we we wanted to uh, the main features we wanted for this portfolio is quality and sturdiness. 
So all the condensed units, they were defined, designed for 110F ambient temperature. Uh, we have applied like a coating on the coils and also um, uh, protection on the coil, on the U-bands. And then all of them are charged with nitrogen from the factory so that you can see when you uh, remove the plug, the, the positive pressure, you can understand it's pressurized. And this is very good because it uh, guarantees you that there is no moisture inside the system. We are looking at ease of service. Uh, ease of service, uh, why? Because I don't know if you've seen recently, but logistic can be very tough sometimes. Uh, we know that and uh, we learn from that. And definitely we've been taking countermeasures. So such as have a very robust packaging. As I mentioned before, we we have we have included the, the band protections, the, the, the coil ends protections, just because we know about transportation and handling can, can be very tough. <clears throat> and then we applied uh, components that are commonly found in the replacement market. Uh, fan motors are out of Morel, uh, side glass is a Defos side glass, filter dryers are uh, Emerson. So all the components uh, are very easy to find them. Embraco compressors, um, definitely. So <clears throat> this can make very easy for you in the event you have to replace a component to go in, in in a in a wholesaler and find uh, the replacement part. Then all the condensed units are compliant with UL with UL requirements, uh, so you can uh, peace of mind with their regards. And they follow uh, standard electrical connections, uh, meaning they all the wirings are follow the national electrical code. Um, and so in terms of the colors of the wires, uh, they always match uh, the national electrical code for this very easy to understand what what stands for what components packages um we have defined three and uh, actually we'll find out that there are actually three uh, or four packages level uh, uh to make easy uh, to, to in order to you know to customize the um the condensed unit based on what you actually need uh we call them version bare plus and ultimate. Uh, the bear includes, is the one here on the bottom left, includes the suction valve, liquid valve, fan guard, and uh, the end cover. End cover means the protection to the u bends of the condenser. And also power cord for the 115 volt. And for sure, all of them are UL recognized. Then um, the plus version uh, basically adds on to the bear, the liquid receiver, and the whole and the liquid line, so side glass and filter dryer. And then uh, the most complete is the ultimate, that uh, on top of the plus version adds a terminal block or um, pressure controls, so a dual pressure control, high and low uh, pressure. And uh, so this is the most compact. Here, we're gonna go just a little bit more details um, as what we were discussing before. Um, here's the condenser, the end covers, the liquid valve out of the condenser, the suction valve, the compressor, and the fan guard. We will go to the plus version on top of the bear. Here we see a few features more. So the liquid receiver, the, the side glass, and the filter dryer in here. This is the ultimate version that on top of the plus includes also electrical box and terminal block and pressure switch, so a dual pressure switch. So this is already hooked up to the compressor, uh, to the process port and to the valve, uh, to, so you don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to deal with that uh, by yourself. And um, uh, as you can see, this is a quite complete condensed unit and um, the main uh, feature we've been sorry, we've been uh, looking at was to have the position of all the piping on the left of the condensed unit. So you know exactly where to go. Here are the valves. And all the electrical connections are always to the right. So you only, you only have one side of the condensed unit where you have to really work on the electrical parts and the other one on the, on the plumbing. Uh, all the valves are uh, sweat valves. And uh, so you can have you can go you can be sure that you have a good connection there with no leakages 
And um, here uh, is presented in the product range. The product range, basically, we have condensed unit for uh, R134A, a traditional refrigerant, but they are also approved for 513A. Um, and we do have product range for uh, 404A, uh, 448, and 449A. Uh, regarding the R134A and 513A, uh, we do have a, um, a, uh, here a set of condensed unit for L and MVP applications. So these are typical for uh, under counters or uh, single door reachings uh, cases, display cases. And they span, as I said before here in the in the catalog, you can see them uh, categorized by bare plus ultimate. And um, on the top, you're gonna see the, the nomenclature. We uh, order them based on the HP rating. So we have one tenth up to one third. And in our nomenclature, nomenclature you're gonna see them as uh, 0 010 up to 0 033. And here in Inside the catalog, you can always see what is the compressor that goes inside the condenser unit. The same for MBP. Uh, here, MBP is for larger uh, size of a condenser unit, goes up to one, uh, one horsepower, and is intended for glass door merchandisers and service cases. Uh, also here, we don't have a bare version, because uh, you understand for this size of application, you always run with an expansion valve, and you need the liquid receiver. So we only have the plus and the ultimate. When it comes to 404A and 448 and 449, we do have a quite broader uh, offering in terms of a solution for LBP. Here, the applications are more about upright freezers and other counter freezers. So as we're seeing here on the right, when we go up to one, uh, one and a quarter horsepower uh, condensed units. Um, as said here as well, most of them are start from the plus and ultimate versions, so pretty complete condensed units. And then for the medium back pressure, <clears throat> these are ideal for uh, glass door merchandisers and service cases. And this can go up to one and a half horsepower. Um, in this case, as you're seeing here at the very bottom, we do have uh, options that um, have a, a called ultimate compact. That we're going to briefly discuss later on. On a nutshell, as you can see, you can see here in a nutshell, we have condensed unit from a tenth to one and a half horsepower. Um, the name of a condensed unit uh, can uh, stands also for the compressor. So we have compressor families uh, called F. So the UF stands for the condensed unit with the F compressor. Also the NE we have UNEs and UNTs stands the condensed unit with the NT compressors. And as you can see in this chart, um, this is the matching of the condensed unit capacity versus the, the application. So we have here uh, bottle coolers under counters, uh, vertical freezer gla uh, glass door uh, cases, uh, rechains, and uh, uh, display cases open door. And as I mentioned before, uh, we do have a version that actually is pretty popular uh, already uh, is the ultimate compact. Uh, this condensed unit uh, here is a cross section. You can see the view in the front of view, a typical uh, ultimate uh, condensed unit and the ultimate compact. Basically, uh, the idea here is to have a shorter uh, size condensed unit, does not exceed 12 uh, inches height. Um, so, the idea here is to use uh, all those applications where uh, the display area is very important. So you don't want to compromise on your display area. So you have a condensed unit, you simply slide, uh, put on the top or slide in, and has a very minimal impact in terms of visual impact. Um, as you can see here, while the single, the, the ultimate goes with one fan motor, the ultimate compact comes with two fan motors. Um, and here we have all the MVP con condensed unit uh, options. Welcome back, Stella. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Johari, for sharing all this content with us. Uh, it's, it's really important information, not, not only to support on the selection of the units, on like how to dimension them, but also 
to help us to to create like a checklist of procedures that we should do like to properly maintain and and also and perhaps replace the, these units and extend the lifespan of the equipment. Uh, yeah, thanks. You know, that was the main <laughs> idea of this, right? To to mm -hmm. to provide a product that is also easy to maintain, not just to to install it once, but also to maintenance in the future. That's very important for our customers, I say. Yes, and th this this was part of our, the scope of the, the beginning of this, this this portfolio, this new lineup is to is to make sure that the products designed for for easy servicing. Yes, and uh, so if you if you guys are interested in learning more about the this lineup of the second generation of condensing units, you can find the complete catalog uh, in the landing page. So it's in the Refrigeration Club uh, slash second generation CDUs. Uh, uh, there you can find all the dimensional data, the the, the performance data as well. Uh, and also some 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 drawings and uh, for for your reference. As well, if you are if you would like to 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 expand your knowledge about refrigeration and and learn more content, uh, we you can also find a lot of uh, our literature and uh, our technical content in our website www.raku.com. If you go to service and support. And then technical documentation, you can find very good information that it's where you can find our catalogs, installation guides, uh, application manuals, like uh, all the the industry trends, also, also also position paper about refrigerant. So so there are really good information there. Also, we have our digital tools. Uh, we call it digital tools because we have uh, several different uh, ways where you can find information. So I already mentioned about our website uh, and our the, our technical blog is called Refrigeration Club. If you go www.refrigerationclub.com, you can find a, a lot of good stuff there. Uh, articles, uh, technical tips, like checklists, like this that Johari just presented to us. Everything that you have to consider when you're, you are working with refrigeration. Um, you also find our product selector software on the website. Uh, there you can find uh, product data sheets, uh, all the information you need to know about uh, all the details about, the, about our products. Uh, and maybe you are already familiar with our app, uh, Embraco Toolbox app. Uh, it's it's very today nowadays it's very easy for us to to have all the the references we need in our in our cell phones. So in our app, it's in Braco Two Box. It's for free. It's available for iOS and uh, and Apple. Uh, you can find cross reference. You can find troubleshoot guides. Uh, you can find uh, also. Uh, I see that some people already ask about where to find Embraco products. You have you can find distributor locator in our toolbox app as well. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, you already have our social media. We are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube as well. All right, fun part. Uh, our quick Q and A. Um, we have some questions already here. We have some people that oh, sent questions uh, through the registration landing page. And also we have some questions from the chat. But if you still have uh, some questions, please uh, write for us. And uh, Johan, let's try to, to see what we can answer today. And if we are not able to answer the questions in, in you, if you think of something else, you can also comment on the YouTube link and we will also reply to the comments there as well. All right. Sounds so, good. Let's see what, what, what questions are coming up. So the first question is more like a, a general comment. Uh, can you talk a, a little bit more about the electricals for us? Uh, what we should consider when we, we're talking about electricals, what's different from uh, only if you're replacing only the, the compressor versus the, the condensing unit? 
Yeah, um, when you um, when you have a, a condensed unit, the one we just showed, we have basically two configuration. The, the bare comes only with a compressor that has a terminal board in a, already a, a pre-assembled to the compressor itself. So you will have to remove the cover and access there the terminals. There is a, the you know the, the neutral and the the, the lead uh, for the, the for the um, line and you can uh, already access there in the terminal board we already pre uh, connected the fan motor uh, so you only have to go there with your connection from the system but for the other units the the configuration plus and in the, the ultimate comes with a terminal block and uh, where we already have uh, everything assembled there so basically you just access the terminal block and where you can do the connection directly there so it's pretty easy and straightforward for you because there, there is um, uh, also a wiring diagram of the condenser unit, and uh, you can easily uh, follow the instructions there and and uh, and connect you to to the to the condenser units. So instead of all the connections like fan motor, compressor, uh, um, and and uh, that is already done, it's already connected to the terminal block. Mm -hmm. And uh, for whatever refrigerants this uh, product line is designed for. The, sec the, I think the second generation. Sorry. What yeah, the second generation, uh, they use currently design. like uh, 134A, and uh, we said before 134A and 513A. Uh, 513A is a drop in on 134A, uh, and then 404A uh, for LMBP condensed units, uh, and but also 404A and 449A. Uh, so the, the, the blends uh, with a little glide. That are a uh, replacement of the 404, but we allow GWP. So basically, it's still HFCs. So um, uh, the, the, we're, the first launch we're doing about the standard portfolio, the second generation is still with the traditional refrigerant. Um, and we are trying, we are addressing that, uh, those refrigerants. Yes, we are constantly uh, expanding our portfolio. So so stay tuned if you, if you want to. Uh, Learn of our new launches. Uh, we always uh, try to 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 listen what the needs are and then try to develop uh, products for to address these needs. Uh, let me see if I can have any uh, another question here. Uh, Josué da Silva, uh, I, he he sent a message in Portuguese. That he said that it was a uh, excellent opportunity for training um, let me see here some people asking about our distributors so uh, please go to our uh, YouTube uh, our uh, Embraco two box app and our website you can find the distributors locator and where to buy um, so the so you, you mentioned something about the, the spare parts that they're already uh, available to the market and uh, some people ask if we're gonna carry the, the spare parts nationwide so this is uh, in, the, in our plan so for now if we have the lead time from the plant but uh, afterwards we, we're gonna have it available as well let's see if we have more questions mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about uh, the limited size uh, of the the, the, the equipment, the, the footprint for the for the condensing units, and also the relation of the size of the unit uh, with the capacity. So let me try to understand if I got it uh, correctly. So the question is about the the size of the condensing unit. Uh, <clears throat> you know, mm -hmm. the, in terms of height, the main uh, size constraint. Is related to the condenser. Uh, the, the taller the condenser, basically, that is usually what defines the height of the of the condenser units. And the, the condenser uh, is sized based on the compressor cooling capacity. Uh, the compressor itself uh, is a, is a pump, uh, basically that uh, pumps refrigerant from a low uh, pressure to and, and converts that to a high pressure because of the compression. And uh, that high pressure uh, gas has to uh, go in the condenser, and that heat has to be dissipated. So the condenser is sized based on the on the the heat rejection that you need. 
uh, together with a fan motor because uh, condenser and fan motor they are uh, they're match basically no none of them can stay alone basically you always consider the combination of them uh, to consider what's the optimum uh, the, the, capa the cooling capacity you can get out of the condenser and that one has to be matched with a compressor so mm -hmm. uh, it's called matching you, you match do, basically do a matching between the compressor and uh, the cooling capacity of the condenser oh. okay so it's not only either one or, or the other is the combination of them that's correct you define the condenser size basically uh based on the cooling capacity of the compressor the higher the compressor cooling capacity, the larger condenser you'll need because you need a, a larger coil to dissipate the heat out of the compressor. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, we have one more question here about the the relationship between the BTUs per hour and the HP. Uh, so what's this? What's this relation? How can I determine the, the HP? Uh, I have a, a rule of thumb, the official way to, to do that conversion. So if it's an LBP uh, application, you divide by 4,000. So 4,000 BTUs in LBP correspond to one horsepower. If it's an uh, HPP application, you divide by 1,200. Uh, sorry, 12,000. I apologize. By 12,000. And that corresponds to one horsepower. So 12,000 BTUs in HPP corresponds to one uh, horsepower and 4,000 BDUs in LBP, low back pressure, correspond to one horsepower as well. So depends on the application. Okay. Uh, I have a question here from uh, Finelli. What's the typical airflow in CFM through typical self-contained condens condenser coils? Oh, that really depends. Uh, as we sh shared before, we do have a uh, condenser unit uh, span from 110 to one and a half horsepower. Um, so depending on application, you, you can have a fan motor there span from uh, the little ones, about 200, uh, up to almost 500 uh, CFM. So it really depends on the, on the cooling capacity of the, com of the condenser unit. As said before, you don't just choose uh, one component. Uh, the, the idea of the condenser unit, uh, the benefits of the condenser unit, is that you have already something pre-assembled, pre-designed to deliver you a certain cooling capacity. You don't have necessarily to worry about the single component selection because we did that already for you. Mm -hmm. and can you can you uh, tell a bit more? Like, what are the our the the features and the things that we have to consider when choosing a condensing unit and what's the, the, the difference between the, the things that we have to consider when changing um, and choosing a compressor? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, a compressor is, is the heart of a, of a cooling system. Uh, though alone wouldn't do too much, it needs uh, the, the condenser, as we said before, uh, the condenser needs a fan motor uh, with a certain fan blade, um, and uh, and then there are other components that we said before. But the core is the compressor, condenser, and fan motor. This is what is really defines a condenser unit in the 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 main the main part, let's say, of the condenser unit. Um, so when you have to select just a compressor, you can look at the data sheet and you know what is the theoretical cooling capacity you can get out of it. Then when you actually apply that in a system. Uh, there are several other factors that can change the actual, the, let's say, the usable cooling capacity out of the compressor, because they mm. depends on the other system uh, or components. While when you have a condenser unit, you have already that determined. You have a, a heat exchanger that has a specific cooling capacity, and you have um, a fan motor and a fan blade that couple together with that condenser that uh, help to dissipate a certain a certain heat. So determine a certain heat rejection. So it, that's already defined. You already know you can operate from uh, in, in which evaporating range you can operate efficiently. And that's already done. So the main difference is, is that oh, the easiness for you to, to, to select and to apply in your system a condensed unit versus a compressor makes your life much easier. 
Yes, definitely. Uh, and we have one more question here uh, from the people that register, and then they they they, they leave us some questions. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you when you what's the difference was when when you have two fans in the condenser? Yeah, no, we show them the the ultimate uh, version, uh, the ultimate compact. Uh, basically, you can have a condenser coil. Um, that has different tubes. The tubes can have a certain length, and uh, depending on the number of tubes, you cannot determine how tall is your condenser. Uh, what really matters for the heat rejection is how long is the tube, the whole the whole tube of the coil. Uh, so if you have to keep it short, as we were uh, showing before, uh, you get to make the, the tubes longer. So you have a longer condenser, a wider, say, condenser. And uh, uh, for, for that, you will need to apply two fan motors uh, because the, you want to have a um, uniform uh, air distribution through the coil. But if you were to apply only one condenser, you want uh, benefits of all the, the whole capacity of the condenser because there will, will be some spots that are or parts of the condenser that are far from the, uh, from the fan motor that wouldn't uh, have real uh, heat exchange with the air. Well, if you have two condenser, uh, two, two fan motors, those will distribute the air throughout the condenser coil and they will uh, help to, re to, to dissipate the heat way more efficiently. So basically you increase the cooling capacity, um, the, the heat rejection capacity of the condenser uh, by, by putting two fan motors. Okay. Thank you, Johari. Uh, our time is, is, is almost, we're on time. So I would like to thank you all for join, joining us today. Uh, I hope this content uh, was very useful for you. And uh, thanks a lot, Johari. Uh, it, was, it was very good, very good information. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you. I really liked it. So let's nice talk to you soon. Yeah, that was fun. Talk to you soon. And see, you, see everybody in the next webinar. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.